Good evening, friends. Welcome to Wednesday night worship service. I'm so glad that you've joined us tonight. We're going to have the worship team come and lead us in a, uh, songs of praise and worship. Hope you'll join with them, sing along with them, worship along with them. Then I'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. We're going to look into a conversation tonight about Pentecost of power. A little bit of a continuation from our last Sunday's service as we celebrated Pentecost. We'll get into that in just a few minutes, but let's worship the Lord together first. Plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He plunged me to victory 
Well, bless the Lord, friends. Welcome back. I'm glad that you've stayed with us. Hope you uh, worshiped with us as the worship team led us. So this, this past Sunday, as I mentioned, was, was Pentecost Sunday. And the message that I shared was entitled Pentecostal Power. This week in our soap readings and journaling, we're reading through the book of Acts. And some of the chapter four in particular just kind of jumped out at me as I was as I was thinking and praying over that chapter uh, a couple days ago, reading through it. it. Took me back to one of the, the points in Sunday's message concerning Pentecostal power. And I wanna kinda just kinda talk through that, think through that a little bit tonight. One of the main reasons I, I'm confident that Jesus baptizes us, uh, fills us with the Holy Spirit, is to give us power and courage to be his witnesses. Wherever we go, wherever we are. In fact, Acts chapter one and verse eight, and yes, I know it's a very familiar passage to many of us, and I read it several times during the message on Sunday. However, bear with me, because I'm gonna read it again tonight for those who are watching who may not be familiar with that passage. And it's in that verse, Acts 1.8, that Jesus is speaking to us, and he says, he says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So there we have it. Pentecost the power in large part so that we could be his witnesses. The followers of Jesus are to be baptized, expected to be baptized in or filled with, if you prefer, the Holy Spirit to enable us to, to be witnesses of or about Jesus and the gospel message, beginning right where they are. In this passage in Jerusalem, they were in Jerusalem in Acts 1.8, and ultimately they began there, but the, the message was from Jesus ultimately to the ends of the earth. So what or where is your Jerusalem? For many of us, it's probably Wasika. For some, maybe Janesville or Elysian, or for some uh, in another state, in another country. Anyway, God chooses ultimately to communicate his message of hope using us, his people, to be witnesses for him, about him, to everyone, everywhere. And he knows that that task can be quite overwhelming for most people. So he immerses us in himself. He baptizes us in the Holy Spirit, in other words, to empower us, to enable us to be his witnesses wherever life happens to take us. Now, I'm talking about Acts chapter four. Well, we'll get to chapter three first. Peter and John are on their way to prayer, a prayer meeting at the temple in Jerusalem. And as they are on their way, they encounter a handicapped man who was begging for money just outside one of the entrances to the temple. It's a tremendous account. And ultimately, though they, they, they don't have money to give him through the power of Jesus, they pray for him, they heal the man, and he goes walking and leaping and praising God. Perhaps like me, you used to sing that song, walking and leaping and praising God. What a great old song that was. Anyway, that larger account, Acts 3 going into chapter 4, it continues in chapter 4. And there we read that Peter and John were put into jail by the religious leaders, in part because of the miracle and in part because of their witnessing about Jesus in the temple. The next day, Peter and John were brought again before the religious leaders and they were commanded by the religious leaders to never speak or teach in the name of Jesus again. Now picking up the account in Acts chapter four, verses 19 and 20, it says there, but Peter and John replied, judge for yourselves whether it is right for in God's sight to obey you rather than God for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. <clears throat> Excuse me. That statement of Peter and John there in verse 20. 
For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. That, friends, that is the power of Pentecost fleshed out in everyday life. Truth is, as followers of Jesus, we should be regularly speaking about what we have seen and heard and experienced. Ultimately, we should be witnessing about Jesus. I know some may already be thinking, I've never seen anything like what Peter and John saw. However, friends, I'm confident you have seen the Lord do some incredible things, even if only in your own salvation account experience. Sharing your personal account of salvation, we call that a testimony. Jesus would call it being his witness. But I also know some of us have seen Jesus do some incredible things. We might call them miracles that we can and should also be testifying about. Now, if you haven't been baptized in the or filled with the Holy Spirit, being Jesus' witness, honestly, is, is much more difficult for most people. Yet, the assignment of every follower of Jesus is to be his witness, to share what we have seen and heard and experienced from and about Jesus. So tonight, tonight, friends, I want to share something that, that Jesus did for my dad. I, I know that I've shared this account many times over the years, probably several times, even in services here at Christian Assembly. Some of you may have already heard the story, and maybe you've heard it more than once from me. And I'm okay with that, because it does not take away from what Jesus did for my dad in his life. I'll also share a couple of things that Jesus was able to do for other people because I shared what he did for my dad, opening the door for them to ask for prayer and to know more about Jesus. So the account goes, goes kind of like this. When my dad came to faith in Jesus, I was pretty young. I was five or six years old. Um, when dad repented of his sin and, and really turned his life over to Jesus as Lord and Savior. And when that happened, he immediately stopped drinking alcohol. I can tell you this, that was the first miracle from Jesus because friends, my dad really liked his beer. For about two years, dad continued to live for Jesus, but struggled with smoking. He was a two plus pack a day, camel straight kind of guy. He had been glorious, saved, and set free from alcohol. However, even with that, there were some in the church who began questioning dad's salvation because he continued to struggle with smoking. I remember a couple of different times hearing my parents talking about how badly dad wanted to quit smoking, but he, he just couldn't quite do it and, and how they had been praying together that Jesus would take the desire for tobacco away from dad like he had done when he became a Christian and he quit drinking. Just boom, he had no more desire for alcohol. Well, one Sunday night we were at church as we always were on Sunday night and as the pastor was finishing his message, he invited anyone who needed prayer to come to the front of the church to be anointed with oil and prayed for. As he was waiting for people to come for prayer, pastor reminded us that, that nothing was too hard for God. I remember my dad saying, even though I had been prayed for before and was praying myself to be set free from tobacco, I felt like I, I needed to go be prayed for one more time asking Jesus to take this habit away from me. He, Dad got up and he, he walked down the center aisle of that little church building, knowing that he had done this before, knowing that there were doubters of his salvation who were watching very closely, but also knowing that he needed to be obedient. So he gets to the front of the church and the pastor and two of the church deacons anointed him with oil and prayed a prayer of faith over him that Jesus could and would set dad free from the addiction to tobacco. Dad said, he said, you know, when they finished praying, all I felt was a need for a smoke. I stayed there standing at the front of the church as long as I could, 
but I really needed to get outside to have a cigarette. He said, I could, I could feel the stares of the doubters as I walked toward the back door of the church. And just getting out the door felt like such a relief for me. He said, I walked across the driveway and took out my pack of cigarettes, reached in my shirt pocket, and began to shake it up, uh, one of those cigarettes out of the pack. Maybe, maybe you've seen someone do that before. Anyway, he said, as I did that, suddenly my hand clenched into a fist crushing that pack of cigarettes and my, my hand and my arm began to shake, just ooh, shake violently back and forth. He said, it seemed like forever. It was probably more like 20 or 30 seconds. And then my hand just flew open and that crushed pack of cigarettes fell to the ground. He said, that was the very last time I ever even had an urge for a cigarette. That, that always amazes me. That, that always amazes me, friends. During my growing up years, I remember dad sharing that account many times. And each time he shared it, it opened the door for him to share more about Jesus. That is exactly what Peter and John were doing in the book of Acts. Sharing what they had seen and heard and experienced while with Jesus. With, and they did it with everyone that they possibly could. After being filled with the Holy Spirit, they said, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Now, prior to being filled with the Holy Spirit, they, they could help it. They just didn't do it very much. But once they were filled with the Holy Spirit, everything changed. As an adult, for me personally, I'd gone off to Bible college to prepare for ministry, and I was serving as a youth pastor. It was summertime. And our senior pastor had gone on vacation with his family, and uh, he had a line uh, worked out for a, for a guest speaker to come and preach for us on the Sunday that he was be gone, would, would be gone. Unfortunately, the guest speaker's vehicle broke down and about midnight on Saturday, he let us know and that he and his wife would not be making it to our church for the Sunday morning service. Somehow, in the midst of it being after midnight, it fell to me. <laughs> I drew the short straw to be the one who would preach for our two Sunday morning services beginning at eight o'clock the next morning. I could tell you, friends, I did not sleep well that night trying to, trying to figure out what it was that I should be preaching the next morning and how to get some kind of an outline or something together. I can also tell you that at the end of the day, I had no clue what I did preach. Except I do remember that in the middle of the message, I shared about my dad coming to repentance, being set free from alcohol, and then two plus years later, how he was prayed for, anointed over, and prayed that God would set him free tobacco as well. And two very distinct miracles of deliverance happened in my dad's life. Well, after, after the second service that Sunday morning, I was, I was heading down the center aisle, get, trying to get out to the back door to be able to greet people by the front door of the church. As I'm on my way to the back of the church, a man stopped me and he told me how he had been struggling to quit smoking, just like my dad had. He said to me, you must have great faith after that happened to your dad. Will you pray for me and be able to, that I would be able to stop smoking too? Very honestly, I wanted to say no. I, I really wanted to admit to not having very much faith. But this man was, he was so desperate for prayer, for Jesus to set him free. And I had just been a witness for Jesus and what he could do. So I prayed a weak prayer with a lack of faith. <laughs> I prayed that both of us would have faith and that Jesus would set this man free. I didn't see him the next Sunday, but two weeks later I did see him and I, I saw that, that he, was, he was glowing with some level of excitement and he came running to meet me to let me know that he had not had a cigarette since two weeks earlier when I prayed for him at the end of service. He said to me, he said, Pastor Brad, Jesus set me free just like your dad. Thanks for sharing that and for having the faith that Jesus could help me too. I wanted to tell him I didn't have any faith, <laughs> but Jesus is beyond my faith. 
but I will tell you this, that since then I've shared my dad's account many times in many places around the world. And on a number of those occasions, someone came and asked me to pray for them too, so that they too could experience what my dad and others had experienced from Jesus. Freedom, deliverance from addiction to alcohol and or tobacco. Primarily it's been tobacco. And I can tell you that every one of them have been set free, just as my dad was. And in every situation, an opportunity to be able to share more about Jesus became available because I shared my dad's account. I, I look forward to someday in eternity with Jesus when, when dad and I will know just how many people's lives have been impacted for Jesus because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a witness of what he had seen, heard, and experienced from Jesus. Friends, it, it continues to amaze me how the Holy Spirit will prompt me to share dad's account because someone where I'm speaking needs to hear that account. And them hearing it will open up more opportunities for me to share more of Jesus with them. The truth is I, I have many of my own things that I have seen, heard, and experienced with Jesus. And I'm sure that many of you do as well. The Holy Spirit, he, he desires to use us, you and me. He wants to use us to be witnesses of those things that we have seen and heard and experienced in our walk with Jesus because, because he can use those things to open someone's heart to more of Jesus. And that, friends, is Pentecostal power, or at least a piece of it. And so I wanna encourage you, over the course of the summer, I'm, I'm looking for people to share testimonies, to be witnesses for Jesus in this setting. You and I, we can stand here together or we can, we can sit someplace and have a conversation of what you have seen or heard or experienced in your walk with Jesus. And, and I'm confident that when you will share that, when you will be that witness, that the Holy Spirit is gonna use that moment to speak into someone else's life to make a difference. And it may draw them to a place of repentance. It may draw them to a place of greater faith to seek him for their own deliverance, their own miracle, their own sense of hope or renewed faith. Uh, so if you've got one of those testimonies to share, one of those witness moments to share, reach out to me. Give me a call, send me a text, write me an email, talk to me after service on Sunday morning. And uh, let's get a time schedule where you and I can get together and record your account of what you've seen and experienced or heard from Jesus that has made a difference in your life so that the Holy Spirit can use it to make a difference in someone else's life. We're gonna close in prayer in just a moment, but let me remind you, Sunday mornings at nine o'clock, we have Sunday school hour here in the building, uh, adult class, children's classes, and then at 10 o'clock, we're here in the sanctuary, also live stream our 10 a.m. service, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Love to have you come and join us here in the sanctuary on Sunday. Sunday mornings, and if you just can't do it, then you can certainly tune into our, our live stream or watch it at a later point in the day. And then uh, we'd love to have you join us back here again next Wednesday night. And again, if you have a, a testimony, if you've got something that you've experienced in with Jesus, let's get together and get that on tape so others can, can uh, grow faith because of hearing your account. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this night. God, I, I thank you again and again for how you set my dad free from alcohol and tobacco. You, you changed his life so dramatically that it impacted my life. My life could have been something much different. But you got a hold of my dad's heart, changed his life, set him free, and, and I, uh, I look so forward to the day when I can hear with dad how many people's lives have been impacted because we've shared that account of your faithfulness, of your healing, delivering power. Thank you for your faithfulness in my life and the lives of many who are tuning in tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Praise God. Once again, friends, let me invite you to share testimony with me. Let's get it down on tape so others, others can, can be encouraged by you being a witness. Have a great night. Pray God's favor and blessing on you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great night.